Hey guys, this is B, and welcome back to my channel. So today, we're going to talk about my life books so far. So what is a life book? I'll just use the definition that Hobonichi has provided. That is a planner or a notebook or a journal that demonstrates the versatility and freedom to accommodate every user's unique personality and lifestyle. So what you're seeing right here are from 2018 up to 2021. So just to give you an overview, I actually created a video before about my journey from Starbucks to Hobonichi and I can include that in the description box or I'll link it above and when I was using this one it's usually just to house this notebook right here and then put other stuff inside and then just carry it in one go. The first thing I've encountered after I graduated from, from Starbucks I discovered bullet journal so this is the notebook where it has that labeling so I bought this notebook together with the book and whatever is written on there I follow that to the T and this is my discovery of this is my discovery of dot grids and one thing about the Leuchtturm notebook is it has that number pages so I actually wrote this one for size comparison because I don't own this two yet. I was creating a figure of, okay, what are the differences in terms of the size and how much space am I going to use? So because my end goal is to reach a six, actually, that's the equivalent of it. If you, so two A6 notebooks is equivalent to one A5. So before I, jump into this particular size knowing that idea that i cannot just simply jump from one size over the other i found about the b6 and at that time the only thing that i was aware of in terms of the b6 size notebooks from uh, jibun techo so when i was using the bullet journal everything was nice and i was able to incorporate a habit of being mindful because one of the things that I think uh, bullet journal teaches you is that when you write your task list every day, if you keep on writing them over and over again, you have to ask yourself like, is that still relevant for me to do? Or I'm just transferring it for the sake of transferring it. So it makes you more aware of the things that you're trying to do on a daily basis and then from there you can take out the noise and then focus on what you really wanted to do and what type of goals you'd like to achieve but then one problem that i found with bullet journal is the collections section i'll discuss that portion later on but this is 2018 I wanted to try a new paper, so I got myself same size. It's a Rhodia Gold Book. Uh, however, this is like a, a soft cover. It has similar features as the previous one. It has dot grid and then uh, the number pages. And I think the color of the pages are the same. Uh, this one is much more lighter compared to to this one. And during this particular year. I was using technical pens like Stadler, Rotring, Sakura Pigma Microns because that one's also waterproof. And then when I moved to 2019, this is when I discovered fountain pens. Half of this work planner is using my Sakura one. And then the other half is using fountain pen. And I'm still using the bullet journal method in this case. And 
that's when I get reminded of, again about the collections because I thought maybe if I try to like change it up into something else I'll be able to work make it work for me so that's why I tried it again for the 2019 and then at this point I got exposed to Japanese pens papers and inks and because both of these are Western brands I think yeah I wanted to try the one with Tomoe River paper and at that time for for 2020 I didn't have access to to it because the only thing that I could think of at that time was Hobonichi it was already sold out when I tried to look for it and I can order online through their website but if it's just going to buy one notebook and that's it it wouldn't be sufficient enough for me to justify the shipping so because I was transitioning myself to A5 to B6 and then to A6 I just went ahead and then you know what let me go ahead and try this one out and then in conjunction to this planner I bought this one and then I later found out that this one is also available I actually got this from Kinokuniya Malaysia and I didn't know at that time that they were carrying this I already bought this one and I was like this particular notebook they have a5 b6 and a6 i couldn't get the b6 because that was already sold out same goes with the a6 this was the only size left so i was like you know what let me just go ahead and buy it because before i make an investment to the famous uh, tomoe river paper and whatever hobonichi has to offer let me go ahead and try it the paper out first because if i didn't like it even though a lot of people would say like it will show the ink properties it's thin and all that stuff if i do not like it it's not gonna work for me so hence i purchased this one and this is just mainly so it's a graph uh, style no pages just plain graph paper so i was writing this primarily just to journal and then the rest of the planning and bullet journal system is in here i actually have a video that i've created for how i use my jibun techo you can go ahead and watch that video and then when i bought this i also got myself the idea notebook when i got the 2020 this is a jibun techo biz the difference is the the color it's like minimalistic feel and then this came with the uh, cover but then if you're just going to buy just the notebook alone this is how the biz looks like and then they have the regular line i think it's in a5 slim if i'm not mistaken the difference is just with the some features are added in here like informational pages similar to Hobonichi but then the color coding in terms of the the layout like this is just like black and then there's a section for red to give you that professional feel and then I can't remember what type of paper this is because they changed it they made the 2021 I can't recall what what that is and then the idea notebook is I think I think this was Tomo Wei river paper i cannot recall and one issue that i found with this particular planner if you're using fountain pens is like the the ghosting or the smudging part i would have to really wait and this is using an f size nib and then what i end up doing for the other entries this these are all written in pilot kakuno extra fine so that's one thing to be mindful of but for some reason i'm not getting it on the idea notebook and by the way this one is just a pencil board from traveler's notebook because 
I think Kokuyo has their own pencil boards, but it's out of stock. And then this was on a sale because they're trying to let everything go. So I bought this because it just fits on the on the width, but for the height doesn't really matter. So I have this three for 2020. And then before I move to the Hobonichi line, I have this spare notebook. I've purchased this way back, I think. I bought this together with the first bottle ink that I own, which is the Lamy Azurite. And then there's a limited edition Lamy Safari pen. And this one has a different type of design inside. And its primary purpose from the ones that I've seen so far, I mainly use this for handwriting practice so what I was doing before was I was doing the quick brown fox thing and then I would indicate what would be the pen the nib size and then what is the color even if it's uh, a cartridge I would also indicate that one too and then I was just writing the alphabet and then uh, this thing right here these are the quotes from the five-year Hobunichi Techo translated. If I can still find the, the website on where I found it, I'll try to link it. And then I was trying to try cursive. And then, yeah, I still have a few pages. Yeah, I have a lot of pages left. And I'm still using it whenever I want to practice my handwriting that's just for the muscle memory of the act of writing in itself so if i want to just practice how to write legibly i would typically grab this notebook and then for 2021 these are the ones that i have so before i talk about the hobonichi i'll just get this one out of the way so this is a Midori Codex. The fastest way of identifying it is this particular design right here. And it is one day, one page, I think. And then inside, it is just plain dot grid. The clear cover is also by Midori. And remember I mentioned before when I was doing the bullet journal system that I had an issue with collections. One of those things was reading. And if I push with collections in a bullet journal system, what I would end up doing is flipping multiple notebooks just to see, okay, what, what have I read or anything like that. I wanted to consolidate it and to fix that problem, that's where this one comes in. Because I haven't seen an A6 size plain notebook that is this thick like for example this is the hobonichi one this is i think 200 something pages so it's even uh less less than a year this was the only thing that would satisfy the requirement that i was looking for hence i bought this one and they got nice paper too if you want an updated version i can create an updated video about this on how I'm using it as a reading journal. The setup, I've already uh, created that video before. I'll just link that one below. So for the Hobonichi part, I've got the five-year. The reason for having the five-year techo, it is some sort of like my, I would call it like a safety net for me. Because even if for a year, I have used a B6 size to transition myself on A6. You know, sometimes FOMO creeps up on you. And one thing that I can think of without really like purchasing anything else, this was the only solution that I have. There are also different brands. I think Midori makes a five year. Uh, Lordstrom also makes a five year as well. But then I chose this one obviously because of the paper. And the layout on how it looks like is it's on the left side, you've got the same day 
in different years so this one is 21 22 23 24 25 and you've got that plain side depending on what you'd like to do what i've been doing in here is just for memory keeping and anything really important that i want to take note of when once i start writing 2022 then i'll be able to just like oh this is what i've been doing for last year and if anybody wanting to go in a journaling practice or maybe they'd like to do some sort of writing without any particular pressure if you can't do it on a plain notebook because sometimes a plain blank page will haunt you for something like you don't want to ruin it or anything like that if you want some sort of a structure where you can you'd like to journal but you don't want to put too much effort i can suggest you to get the five year if this is too big for you then they have an a6 size version i just got myself an a5 because i was afraid of maybe the a6 is too small for me and because i'm already used to writing a few lines per day this works for me by 2026 we don't i don't know maybe i'll change to an a6 size but for now i am satisfied with this one this one doesn't have any stickers washi or anything like that it's just plainly writing and then you have this let me take this one out so we have this three so this one if you've been following me on this channel i've been using this for my challenges journal or anything like that like everything so that's why you you might see that this is a bit chunky because i stick a lot of things in here and then the other one this is my financial planner so if you compare these two this is just using a fountain pen no stickers no labels i mean i put some markers but that's about it so that's why the the thinness of the notebook when i first got it i still maintain that one and this is using an english planner this is a spring edition of the original techo so the difference between the two if uh jibun techo has their two versions of the planner like the biz and the, the regular one hobunichi does the same thing so the english planner where it has that english uh, quotes everything is in black and then on a sunday it switches to red whereas on the original techo whether if it's spring edition or not the color uh, changes depending on whatever is the color in this side like for example for for march this is for 2022 it is purple and then if i move it to the previous one for the previous year like this one is olive green and then the side has like a time blocking uh this one doesn't so it's just like 12 and then food and then obviously the quotes you can pretty much just use google i don't know if the quotes here and on the planner are the same you can just probably use your phone to do a google translate although it's not perfect at least you get a an, a, a gist of it and then this is going to be used for two years i can get into details on this one on a separate video but for now this is a financial planner last but not the least we have the hobonichi plain notebook so this is just a plain graph paper which i'm very accustomed to because i took up engineering hence this is normal for me and i use the this one for morning pages so i write back to back with it and since i'm almost finished that's why you saw this one earlier so i am comfortable now with a6 and if ever i'd like to go back to a5 or anything like that i get reminded because of this five year so whenever you make decisions in terms of how you'd like to decide your life book 
you would have to ask yourself why you're doing it and find some purpose or maybe a goal for me it was for archiving it's difficult for me to archive if all of my life books are a5 size that's why i made a decision to transition first myself to b6 and then eventually to a6 and other than that i still continue on doing the bullet journal system with a mix of journaling sometimes i would just even draw put washi stickers or anything like that and it is still a continuous journey for me in terms of my progress but for now these are all of my life books and i'm excited to see what's for 2022 thanks again for watching don't forget to like and subscribe